So I'd like to introduce uh, Matt Blanchard, who's coming up. Matt's the GM for EMEA for Varicent. Welcome, Matt. Uh, yeah. Uh, popular guy. So Matt, Matt's been in compensation and management, uh, compensation management for over a decade. Um, works at Practice Associates, Mercer Systems. I think I said that right. And Nice yes. Systems, and then joined IBM to lead the sales performance management business that then got branched off and is now Varicent. Correct. I believe. Yeah. Um, uh, self admittedly, doctor's nightmare uh, because he's <laughs> lactose intolerant, so stay away from dairy. But also, if you see him running, it's probably because he's near a wasp because he's also allergic to wasps, so it's probably not great. At least you didn't tell him I was scared of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to tell people he was scared because that'd be worse. But uh, so, um, me and Matt are just going to have a chat about it. I think, was that because you couldn't call it? Or? Well, I've already done a load okay, of these virtually, okay. and I didn't want to do it. <laughs> so, uh, this is your first year sponsoring Sales Confidence. Correct. And this question is not going, well, why the fuck did you do it? But why did you choose to do it? James told us to. Okay. <laughs> That's a good point. No, we've been watching uh, the community grow over probably the last two years as we were inside of IBM and then as we left. And so we decided that actually we wanted to give back to the community. And whether it be in the form of sponsorship or whether it be in the form of just communication, for us, it was something that we had to do. And James is growing this from area to area, as in bigger to bigger. And we wanted to be one of the biggest sponsors, but obviously had other plans, so we had to stay lower in the packages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, what did Varys do? What do we, <laughs> so in its simplest form, we help make sure that salespeople get paid commission. So whether it be in the form of services people or sales people, we want to make sure you get paid on time and in a way that you understand. So really simple. Um, I bought into this because of the fact that I like money myself. So it was the simplest thing for me was making sure that it was transparent and easy for me to understand. And that's what we do. Okay, what I'm interested in, and hopefully these guys are as well, is you as a leader, oh. okay? Uh, They're here. They, we're you not can really answer. prepared. To talk a few <laughs> questions, but, uh, so, tell us, what's your superpower as a leader? Where do you think your strengths are? Oh, I've got a big credit card, and the expenses are paid on time. No, I think that the key thing for me is always empathy. Um, throughout COVID, we have learned that we are different people. We're different in the way in which we interact with one another. We're different in the way in which people come to us as, as management as well. And I think as a, as a leader, it's making sure that you address every challenge as it comes, but at the same time, we're still there to sell. So it's making sure that we're giving them the tools and the necessity, or, or not even the necessity, but the tools that they require to do their job day in, day out, and, and making sure we're there to support them. And so I think, hopefully, this lot will say that's one of the things I do well. Cool, okay, and I haven't told many of these questions from now on, so uh, uh, what's been your biggest challenge? What's been my biggest? COVID through this time. Um, so we left IBM on the very first day that COVID happened. Okay, so we had set up an office. We had a skeleton staff. We were going to be coming out big and better. We were going to be Varus and the cool company. And then Boris said, you're not going anywhere. And so we basically had to build a business behind closed doors. We had to go to market with marketing and everything without really testing it. And that caused us a huge challenge, not just from a branding perspective, but as a, as a as a person that's just left that large ecosystem going to a small team. So I think you mentioned 10 to 61. We left IBM as 24 and we're now 71. And so that's in 18 months. We onboarded 50 people remotely, mm. which is ridiculous. And some of them actually stayed, which was useful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you onboarded double that. But oh, yeah, yeah, else. correct. If you don't ask HR. Um, but. For, for us, that was the hardest part, is, is making sure you're bringing the right people into the right culture and then that you're driving it in the right way. Because it's okay having people to be there and to do the job and be at home, mm. but actually having them understand what we do, what our culture is, what we're trying to achieve for our customers, because ultimately our customers are the biggest thing. We, we work with the likes of T-Mobile, Telefonica, American Express, even, even all the way down to some of the smaller ones. But fundamentally, they are the ones that pay our bills and allow us to pay James to turn up at these events and get told we're speaking. And are you going back to an office or are you all remote? We, so at the minute we're going back to a hybrid style. Okay. So um, I, I'm one for getting out and enjoying myself. So the team hopefully enjoy that too. Um, but if not, they're going to do it with me. So okay. fundamentally, we, along. yeah, correct. Okay. Um, so we've got, we've got an office. We're going to go hybrid model. We're going to allow people the opportunity to do what they want because that's what we did anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, we were traveling four or five days a week. Uh, we were having 
meetings with clients. Now we're going back to client meetings as well. So fundamentally, we're giving the option to our staff versus anybody else. What are you most wary of with that change, transition back to what people see as the norm? What are your concerns? What are you concentrating on? I think it <laughs> me versus our CEO are two very different things. Okay. Our yeah. CEO is Canadian, very reserved, doesn't want anybody to leave their house ever again. Um, I, I'm of the opposite. I would like people to join this with us and, and to effectively get back to some form of normality. But the challenge is you can't force people to do that. And with mental health and with the fact that we have been cooped up for such a long period of time, getting back on a train can be a hard thing for somebody. Getting on a, a tube, which I'm never doing again, um, it's just not something that you'd never anticipate being a challenge, but people do. And so we have to take that on board and we have to listen to what they're saying to make sure we give them what they desire to come to work for us.